I gathered four of the top browsers and put them to the test to see which one's actually better. In this video, we'll compare these browsers using four key tests, speed, performance, features, and privacy. Before we get into this video, I'd like to clarify that all these browsers used in this video were reset to their default settings and all extensions were turned off. First up is the speed test. For this test, I used Bedometer, which is a benchmark that measures the responsiveness of web apps. Jetstream 2, which is a benchmark focused on how smoothly a browser can execute advanced JavaScript and WebAssembly code and Motionmark, which is a benchmark that measures a browser's ability to do complex animations. For Speedometer, I ran it three consecutive times in each browser and averaged out the scores. Coming in first place, we have Opera, with an average score of 8.27, followed by Chrome, which has a slightly lower score of 7.98. Then we have Firefox, with an average score of 6.32. And lastly, we have Edge, with a score of 5.36. For Jetstream 2, I don't know if it was because of the version of Edge I was using or what, but almost every time I ran Jetstream 2 on Edge, Edge would either crash or just completely freeze up. However, the one time I did get it to run without crashing, it took 42 minutes and scored a whopping 16.63 points. It's for the other browsers, they scored a lot higher, with Chrome in at first place with an average score of 158.76, followed by Opera with a score of 154.496, and then Firefox in third place with a score of just 106.512. For Motionmark, Opera took the lead again, scoring an average of 506.41, followed by Firefox with an average score of 101.46, then Chrome coming in at third place with a score of 395.6, and Edge coming in last with a score of 367.34. As for the winner of this category, I'll have to choose Opera as it has scored the most total points. Next up is the performance test. For this test, I opened five tabs in each browser, one tab being a 1080p YouTube video, and the others just being Reddit and news websites. For Firefox, as you can see, it tends to use around 1.7 to 1.9 gigabytes of RAM. For Chrome, as you can see, it isn't really that much different from Firefox, with it using about 1.7 to 1.8 gigabytes of RAM. Now for Opera, it seems to use slightly more RAM than Chrome and Firefox, with it using around 2 gigabytes to 2.1 gigabytes of RAM. As for Edge, it isn't really that much different from Chrome or Firefox with it using only about 1.8 to 1.9 gigabytes of RAM. As for the winner of this category, I think I'll have to leave it at a tie between Chrome and Firefox, as they both seem to use almost the same amount of RAM. Next up is features. We'll start with Chrome. First, Chrome has a memory saver feature. Essentially what this does is make tabs that you haven't opened for a while inactive, meaning that when you go back to the tab, it will reload completely. For this, you can choose between moderate, which makes tabs inactive after a moderate amount of time, Balanced, which makes tabs inactive after an optimal period of time, and Maximum, which makes tabs inactive after a short period of time. Chrome also has a feature that preloads websites you frequently visit automatically. Lastly, Chrome is integrated with Gemini, so if you ever need help generating some AI slop, you can simply right click and click help me write, and then type the description of the slop you want to generate. Or if you need help figuring out how much glue you should put in your pizza or how many rocks you should eat per day, you can simply type at Gemini in your search bar. Moving on, we have Firefox. Now with Firefox, you can send tabs between your computer and your phone by simply right-clicking on the tab that you want to send and going down to Send to Device and clicking on the device you want to send it to. Now one of my favorite Firefox features is containers. While not built in by default, it is an extension called Multi-Account Containers, which allows you to make and label different containers for the same website. So for example, if you have two YouTube channels, you can simply make a new container by going up here to the extension and going to Manage Containers, then clicking on New Container and typing the name of your container. Furthermore, we have Opera, which has its own built-in free VPN as well as a feature that they're calling speed dials, which are essentially bookmarks, except they're slightly more customizable. For example, you can change things like the thumbnail or move them around. It also has a feature that they're calling lucid mode, which sharpens video that you can turn on whenever you're watching a video by simply clicking this run button at the top of the video player. Also, you can adjust the sharpness of a video by going up here to easy setup and going down to lucid mode, then using the slider. Lastly, Opera has a feature called Tab Islands that allows you to organize tabs in the groups by simply shift-clicking all the tabs that you want to group together and right-clicking and going down to create Tab Island. Next up, we have Edge. Now, interestingly, Edge has a feature called Vertical Tabs, which rearranges your tabs into a vertical list, which you can enable by going to Settings, going down to Appearance, and clicking on Turn On next to Show Vertical Tabs. It also has Copilot built in, which can do things like summarize a page or generate AI articles. 
Lastly, it has a VPN that they dubbed Microsoft Edge Secure Networking. However, while it is free, you can only use up to 5 GB of data per month. And it can be enabled by going up here to Browser Essentials and clicking on Get VPN for free. Next up, we have Privacy. We'll start with Chrome. For starters, let's just say Google is not exactly known for respecting users' privacy, like at all. They've been sued numerous times for violating users' privacy, including one lawsuit over an incognito mode where Google was forced to delete all user info that was collected while users were in incognito mode. Other than that, Chrome does have some privacy features, including Secure DNS, which is a feature that encrypts your DNS traffic, as well as Safe Browsing, which protects you from dangerous sites, downloads, and extensions, and hides your IP address. Moving on, we have Opera. Not like Google, they do have targeted ads and collect your data, but it does have a built-in VPN, which may or may not collect your data, as well as an ad blocker that can be enabled by clicking these three dots and going down to Privacy and Security. A tracker blocker, which can be enabled in the same place, next up we have Firefox. Now while Firefox does have some partnerships with companies like Google and Pocket, which collects some user data for recommendations, it generally has a strong track record when it comes to privacy. For privacy features, it has enhanced tracking, which you can find under privacy and security and settings. What it does is block things like social media trackers, cross-site cookies, and crypto miners. It can also tell websites to not sell your data send do not track requests to websites every time you visit them, as well as the ability to block potentially dangerous and deceptive content. Lastly, we have Edge. Similar to Chrome, Edge collects user data like browser history and cookies, as well as other personal information. As for privacy features, it has tracking prevention, which has three levels of protection, basic, which blocks only harmful trackers, balanced, which blocks trackers on websites that you haven't visited, and strict, which blocks trackers on all websites and Enhanced Security, which disables just-in-time compilation and enables hardware-enforced stack protection and arbitrary code guard. For the winner of this category, I'm gonna have to go with Firefox because while it does have partnerships with companies like Google, it also collects the least user data out of all the browsers that I've tested. Anyway, that is all I have for you in today's video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe. Peace!